one of us. Nobody ever wanted to happen. But however, we are disappointed because we have been complaining over and over and over about the situation concerning the equipment and training and everything that is applied to estate police officers. Right? We have two officers from Allied dead. One still struggling for life. And I want to make it clear because a number of people have been killing her. She is still fighting at the Mount Hope Hospital for her life. Right? I have with me yet members of the executive before the vice, second vice president, Mr. Bagwan Heath, General Secretary, Mr. Robert Oakley, and we have also have Mr. Joseph, Mr. Cooper, and also Mr. Ryan. Right? But this is not about the executive today. We are aware we have been making our calls since 2019 for the authorities, for the Minister of Finance to take away taxes and duties on bulletproof vests and to provide more opportunities and better training. Right? That is what is the crux of the matter. Yesterday on the radio program on I-95, you mentioned this also. And then when I came off the program on my way home, I got the message. Right? But this, I have here, the, I have the, the president, the, the president, the secretary of the branch board, Ms. Ranger, right? She is going to address, and then we also have Mr. Creville, right? They are, they, they, these are their colleagues. These are people that they make, they make this, these shifts with. They have been complaining for the longest while. So I want to hand over to them so that they could tell the press exactly what's been happening at Allied. We have been begging Allied Security for over seven years for, for proper vehicles to do CIT pickups. Allied has not provided that. What they did is to continue to increase in their pickups and give us vehicles that is not suitable. I would have written to the HR department, Ms. Singh, asking for a meeting to deal with safety of vehicles, bulletproof vests, and some other issues. To date, Ms. Singh has not responded to me. I would have to go to the deputy chair to get a meeting on the 24th of last month. I would have would have met with the deputy chair concerning bulletproof vest. The argument is the price of the vest and how, what the company is willing to pay for the vest. Today we have two dead colleagues and one is fighting. I'm asking for the government to put things in place, laws in place for these security firms to have proper vehicles and safety equipment for all estate constables. Thank you. Two colleagues of mine, two friends of mine, two family members, basically, because we are family at this level. These guys would have served the company, Mr. Peters, for 19 years, Mr. Stewart going on 15 years. And to see that they lost their lives in such a manner, it is, it is heart-wrenching. These guys left families, Mr. Peters have two little kids. Mr. Stewart has a daughter and a son. His mother at home. So we have family members who are grieving this morning together with us. So let us get that out there first. Let Allied Security understand that we are grieving this morning. We are not out here to play. We are not out here to fight. We are grieving. Ms. Ranger would have, would have mentioned the seven years and more where we would have tried our best in meetings with the CEO, in meetings with the deputy chair, to get a meeting with the HR manager is almost impossible. And we would have continuously speak to the CEO, Mr. Victor Fassad, concerning the armored vehicles to be used in this particular detail. And I think everybody and every child would know that you need that vehicle to perform effectively and more, more so safely. We are looking at bulletproof vests dated six, seven years ago that officers are using. We are outside here saying this morning that enough is enough. If the company does not want to do what they are supposed to do, we are asking the government to step in and ensure that these companies that make millions and millions of dollars on the officers stand up and say, listen, it is time you take care of these people. 1750 minimum wage an hour. 1750. 18 dollars and 76 cents an hour. 22 dollars to carry a firearm. And we, 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 are we are looking at that, right? 
twenty-two dollars or twenty-six dollars to carry a fire and two dollars and a soft drink. If so much. Every day our families are struggling. Every day we are trying to make ends meet. And these companies are making millions, not just Alec. The private industry in, in, in its entirety. But today we are focusing on Ally because that is our home. That is where we have given our life blood. I have 20 years here. So these gentlemen are very, very close to my heart. The lady who is fighting for her life is a personal, personal friend of mine. Her children call me up. So we are asking the country to pray for her because it's not easy. But we are dealing with Ally. There's a vehicle at the side there. If you all walk down. Right after the tent, there's a vehicle at the side there. I would like you all to photograph that vehicle. That is the proposed armored vehicle about six years ago? Six years. About six years ago that they would have bought. It is still there, it is rusting. So if the company does not want to invest in its officers, we are letting them know that we are taking no more. We are not going back outside there in those soft shell vehicles because you are talking about high powered rifles in the, industry, in, in, in the workplace now. These guys are not coming to play. And if anybody saw the videos, they would notice that these guys didn't come to play. They came to kill. Not to maim, not to rob alone, but they came with the intentions to kill. There was not even a second for our colleagues to respond. Think about it. You looking at those videos with your family. What is your condition today? So again, I am joining my colleagues here with the executive. I want to thank the executive for making this move with us, as they have been doing since they are in office. And we are saying boldly to the company, get your act together. We are accepting this no more. Get your act together. Thank you, have a blessing. The history of victimization. When we came here today, we met with one of the managers. He came outside, Mr. Passad, and he started talking down to the officer and started cussing, saying the M word, the mother so and so, and that is the kind of managers we have here today. That is the kind of managers. So you all, the media and the public, could just imagine what these officers face and why they are fearful of being victimized. If after two persons lose their life and one in the hospital, a manager, Mr. Passat, could come outside and start to cuss, that is very unfortunate. That says a lot for the company. And I'm sure he will be in this company for a long time. I'm sure he will be the company for a long time. No action will be taken against him. But if an officer refuse to go to work because they are not provided with his uh, protective equipment, they will take action against them. And they have a tribunal that normally set up here. But it's better the association represent you in a tribunal that six and then six after career. It's time this thing come to an end. It's time security officers in this industry come out. How much more fearful you could be of victimization, people losing their life. It's time for me to take a stand. And it's time for the country to understand that you all have to support the private security industry and the security industry. Because these officers protect you and your family as well. Seventeen fifty and eighteen dollars an hour to put your life in the line to protect your family and to protect the cash. So we need and the private security bill would not address these issues. We call in once again on the government to meet with the association to address you know, the issues in the industry. Just imagine today, if it had a private security bill in its present form, these officers wouldn't have the SA Police Association to represent them. They would not, we would not be here representing the officers. We might be here, but not as a representative because the private security bill take away the associates, take, out, take away their precept. So there's a lot of changes need to happen in this industry. The budget is Monday, so I hope if it's not there, that they could find a place in the budget where they could reduce or remove all the taxes for protective equipment.